Good afternoon, everyone. The radicals are in control of the Democrat Party. Make no mistake, Democrat radicals want to shatter norms and disregard precedent for the sake of the very norms and precedent they claim must be safeguarded. They've proposed court packing, an egregious idea. They've entertained impeachment as punishment for the president exercising his lawful Article II, Section II authority to appoint, uh, nominate rather, a justice to the Supreme Court. They've advocated for the abolition of the Electoral College. These are all the tactics that they are using to sow chaos and discord. Likewise, they're endorsing a mass mail-out ballot system that will likely lead to the kind of week-long delay New York witnessed in its recent primary. Far-left radicals resort to tactics like this to push their extreme agenda because they cannot win on the merits. They cannot succeed based on the will of the American people. This administration will continue to call out these tactics while Democrats should end their petty politics and get to work. And with that, I'll take questions. John. Yeah, Kelly, I wonder if you can just clean up or clarify something the president said yesterday. Um, if he loses this election, can you assure us that there will be a peaceful transfer of power? You are referring to the question asked by the Playboy reporter, right? I, I'm referring to you with the president being asked if, if there would be a peaceful transfer of power, and he did not uh, say yes. Yeah, so I believe I'm asking you, will there be a peaceful transfer of power if he loses this I election? I believe that question asked by the Playboy power, in fact, I think I have it right here uh he was I'm asked asking he was asked when lose or draw whether he would accept the transfer of power i'm not entirely sure if he won why he would accept a transfer of power that is um maybe the deranged wish of that reporter but that's not how uh, I'm governing a very works. direct and very simple question if the president loses this election Will this White House, will this president assure us that there will be a peaceful transfer of power? It's a very simple question. The, the, president, since, uh, the president will accept, accept the results of a free and fair election. Uh, but I think that your question is more fitting to be asked of Democrats who have already been on the record saying they won't accept the results of an election. Um, in fact, I have several of them here for you. South Carolina Democrat uh, Jim Clyburn has said uh, that Trump is not going to win fairly. Senator Barbara a boxer has said that the only way Trump will win is to steal it. That's according to Democrat Senator Barbara Boxer. Uh, the Washington Post has noted um, they have a headline, Democrats may not trust the results of the election if Trump wins. And then you have uh, that beautiful quote from Hillary Quint Clinton that Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstance. So I think your fitting is more quest more uh, fitting, a fitting question for Democrats. Yes. Kelly, uh, Kelly, just to understand this clearly, are the results legitimate only if the president wins? The president will accept the results of a free and fair election. He will accept the will of the American people. So for clarity, if he loses and it's free and fair, he will accept it. I've answered your question. He will accept the results of a free and fair election. Let me ask you about Breonna Taylor, if I can, right now. First of all, have just a little housekeeping. Has the president spoken to the family of Breonna Taylor? Um, I'm not aware of any conversation that they've had, but our hearts do go out to our family. Has the president spoken to the officers who were shot last night in Louisville? I'm not aware of any conversations. So the president spoke to the officers who were shot in Los Angeles, but to this point, there's no indication the president at any point over the last several months has spoken to the family of Breonna Taylor. I guess why the, not? The president routinely um, speaks to victims of horrendous um, tragedies. I've been here when he's um, met with the parents who lost uh, their children to instances of police brutality. Um, it was a really beautiful meeting, and the president um, consoled them. He's talked to the widows who have lost um, their husbands to police officers. He's um, spoken to widows of fallen soldiers. He routinely reaches out to victims of all kinds of atrocities, and he'll continue to do that. What is the president's yes. message to the family of Breonna. I heard what you said, we grieve for them. But what is the president's message to the family of Breonna Taylor that does not believe they received justice? That our hearts go out to her. Um, it was a horrible tragedy that happened and that our hearts also are with the two police officers who were shot last night in the Louisville riots. When you say our, you mean, you mean the White House, including yes, the president? Yes, I speak on behalf of the president. Yes. His thoughts go out. I am the president's spokesperson. I speak on his behalf, well, Peter. Then go ahead. Person, which is why I asked, but go ahead. So, Kaylee, yesterday when the president said, get rid of the ballots, there won't be a transfer, frankly, there'll be a continuation. Which particular ballots is he talking about wanting to get rid of, and why does he think that would help him get elected? 
Uh, the president wants to get rid of mass mail out voting. Um, and that's not because it, he said clearly that that could go either way. It could damage either candidate's um, chances because it's a system that's subject to fraud. In fact, in the last 24 hours, police in Greenville, Wisconsin, found mail in a ditch and it included absentee ballots. Um, and also, I can confirm for you that Trump ballots, um, ballots for the president, were found in Pennsylvania. And I believe you should be getting more information on that shortly. Here in the last 24 hours, they were found cast aside. So why in the past hour did the president tweet out, vote by mail ballots in my home state of Florida begin going out today? Make sure to request yours, fill it out, and send it in. The president has always made the distinction that absentee ballots, where you go through a process where you request a ballot um, and you mail that in, that is a system that works. But a system where you mass mail out to voter rolls, which are not kept and maintained, where in Los Angeles County, for instance, you have 120 percent of the county enrolled, that system is untenable. It doesn't work. It leads to what we saw in Nevada, where there were ballots languishing in trash cans and pinned to apartment boards. Okay, just finally, uh, today, FBI Director Ray testified on the Hill that he has not seen historic any kind of coordinated national voter fraud effort in a major election, whether it's by mail or otherwise. So if the president's own FBI director says this isn't a problem, why does the president keep saying it is? Well, as Attorney General Barr has said, we've never had an election where we've done mass mail-out voting like this before. Um, I would point you to a bipartisan study um, done by none other than Jimmy Carter, who said that these mail-in votes uh, remain the largest source of potential fraud. And he even cited an example of a 1997 Miami mayor election that resulted in 36 arrests for absentee ballot fraud. That election had to be rerun and the results were reversed. Uh, that is an example from 1997. But there are many others like Pat Patterson, New Jersey, where four men were charged with voting fraud recently. Four more men were charged in California. And there's a ton of examples. I could get you an encyclopedia of fraudulent examples we've had. Ballots are going out. If the president does win, will he still think it was rigged and fraudulent? I've already answered this question. Yes. Kaylee, uh, the president's niece uh, filed a lawsuit in New York State Court today alleging that the president and two of his siblings had cheated her out of millions and squeezed her out of the family business. And we were hoping to get a uh, reaction from the White House. Yeah, uh, the only fraud committed there was Mary Trump recording uh, one of her relatives, and uh, she's really discredited herself. Yes. Um, Kaylee, on TikTok, we know that the CFIUS negotiations are continuing. Can you say, has the president been briefed in the last couple days about how the CFIUS negotiations are going? Do you know when those negotiations will end? Yeah, not that I, I'm not aware of the brief his briefing schedule with regard to TikTok, but what I can say is what the president has said, which is that any deal has to be 100 percent as far as national security is concerned. And I'd refer you uh, to his comments as well as of those uh, from the Department of Treasury for any further specifics. I'd refer you there. Yes, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Kaylee. The president suggested yesterday that he might overrule stricter standards of the FDA on the coronavirus vaccine. Why would the president not want strict standards for a vaccine on the coronavirus? Well, the FDA uh, does have strict standards. They are uh, the gold standard with regard to vaccines. Uh, the president was referring to the normal interagency process that happens uh, with guidance, and that includes running through um, the Office of Management and Budget. So that's standard operating procedure. And I would also point out, I spoke to Dr. Hahn this morning, um, and Dr. Hahn said that the guidance issued um, was a follow-up to June 30th guidance that they put out, and it was um, guidance, it was guidance that they gave uh, to pharmaceutical companies to provide them with more regulatory clarity. Yes. Uh, the White House is describing this health care event today as a chance for the president to outline his vision. Is that something less than his plan? And uh, just a, a second part of that, does the White House think that it can address the country's challenges with health care solely through executive action? So um, the president will be laying out um, his health care vision today. I don't want to get ahead of exactly what that will look like. There will be um, some tangible actions taken, um, as well as the president really laying out, which I something that I think has been overlooked, the real contrast between what Obamacare gave us between 2013 and 2017 and what the president has delivered. Um, and, and I think we have a graphic to that effect. I'm not, I'm not sure if they were able to put it together in time. Um, but with Obamacare, it is a fact that from 2013 to 
2017, premiums in this country went up. In fact, they went up by 105% on the individual market. Um, and you contrast that with President Trump, what he's managed to do um, by rolling back a lot of Obamacare. And we've seen premiums on the individual market go down. Um, same for Medicare Part D and Medicare Advantage, the polar opposite of what happened with Obamacare, where those premiums went up. So premiums have come down under this president. Drug prices have come down under President Obama. Drug prices were up 15 percent. Um, under President Trump, they came down for the first time in 50 years. Um, and then finally, under Obamacare, you had choice that went down. One third of counties had only one insurer in the individual market. Um, and with President Trump, there are new affordable options like AHPs, STLDIs, and HRAs, uh, health care reimbursement arrangements, um, as well as employer-sponsored insurance um, that has gone up. We've seen an increase of 1.5 million in 2019. So these principles um, have undergirded the Trump presidency, and he will use many of the same uh, principles going forward. And you'll get his comprehensive health care vision that will include some action items um, here in short order. Is this the extent of the plan, or is there more after this? This is going to be his full vision uh, that he has been talking about over the last few weeks, um, and it'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina uh, today. Yes. Thanks so much, Kaylee. I wanted to ask about the Supreme Court uh, considerations. Um, has the president met with all the top candidates uh, that are under consideration? Are there any others? Who else is he? Are there any others that he still plans to meet with? Judge Lagoa, for example, does he still plan to meet with Judge Lagoa? So I'm not going to get into the president's private meetings with these candidates. He's noted that there are five he's considering. They all fall in the same mold as textualists, originalists, constitution-abiding judges. On another note, today at the Supreme Court, uh, when the president approached, uh, you know, was, was paying his respects to Justice Ginsburg, there were some people in the crowd that started the chant uh, to uh, respect her wishes, to uphold her wishes. Um, do you have some thoughts on those chants, which also, you know, included vote him out? Yeah, I think the, the chants were appalling, but certainly to be expected when you're in the heart of the swamp. I travel with the president all across the country, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, Nevada, and everywhere we go, uh, the streets are lined with support um, like I don't think any other president has had previously. Um, but with regard to precedent, as I've noted before, 29 times has an appointment uh, been made in an election year, um, 29 times, and that was all 29 times um, when there was a vacancy um, at hand. So the precedent is very much on our side here. And I would also note the hypocrisy of Democrats, Joe Biden saying, I would go forward with the confirmation process as chairman, even a few months before an election. Uh, Barack Obama saying, fill the Supreme Court vacancy when it was his tenure. And you had Kamala Harris saying as well uh, that Senate GOP is holding SCOTUS hostage for political gain. Join me in calling them to consider uh, President Obama's nominee. So they've really flipped here because the precedent is on our side and their hypocrisy is on full display. Yes. Okay, um, the former number two of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Paul Selva, who served under President Trump, he and 500 other national security and military leaders, they endorsed Joe Biden today. Do you guys have a comment on that, given that it doesn't seem like Jim Mattis and Joe Dunford, who also served under the president, are rushing to support in this election. Yeah, I think the president's record speaks for itself. Our military men and women, our veterans, love this president for a very distinct reason. Um, under Obama-Biden, sequestration really gutted our military. You had the Navy at its smallest point ever, um, and the other military branches were absolutely gutted. Then you had President Trump, who came in and secured a record amount of funding for our military and our department of defense and built up our military. Um, when it comes to veterans, the appalling uh, way that our veterans were treated at the VA under Obama-Biden, there was an IG report that as many as 300,000 veterans, think about that, 300,000 veterans could have died waiting for care. This president came in, put in the VA Missions Act, secured real choice and options for our veterans, um, and that's the reason that the military and our veterans love this president. But why is Selva endorsing uh, I can't Biden. speak to one person's reasoning, but uh, this president, when you look at what he's done, um, bringing our troops home and all he's done in aggregate, uh, the rank and file in this military love this president. Yes. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, two quick follow-ups on what we discussed earlier. Does the president still have confidence in the FDA commissioner based on his comments yesterday? Um, there are no changes. Dr. Hahn is FDA commissioner, so yes. And then to follow up, you said that you thought the chance outside the Supreme Court this morning were appalling. Uh, 
Is there any issue with people peaceably demonstrating and chanting at the president? No, of course. Everyone has a First Amendment in this country, but I thought it was an appalling and disrespectful thing to do as the president honored, honored Justice Ginsburg. Yes. Uh, what was the emergency call the president left yesterday's briefing to take? Um, the, I'm not going to get into a readout of the president's calls, but he regularly takes very important phone calls. Yes, Thank you, definitely. Um, what is the likelihood that Sudan will be the next country to recognize Israel? And are there any new developments that you're expecting after the Emirates in Bahrain recognized Israel? So the president has noted that there are several other countries that want to make agreements of this sort. Um, I won't confirm exactly which country will be next, but rest assured the world has looked at what this president did. Historic agreements between the UAE uh, and Israel and Bahrain. And do you see deals that, like you haven't seen in a quarter of a century? It was 26 years um, it, between the second uh, and the third deal in just 29 days between the third and the fourth. This president's the only president to have um, overseen the normalization of relations um, between Israel and two Middle East countries. Um, to have two on his watch is a really big deal. And no wonder, uh, two Nobel Peace Prize nominations as well. Yes, Lily. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what's the status of coronavirus vaccination this year? Do you expect this to be available before Christmas? Uh, we do expect to have a vaccine by the end of the year. Uh, that has always been the goal, and we are still on track for that. Um, it's very important uh, that what the president has done with regard to commercial um, level manufacturing, as uh, Dr. Salawi told me, the fact that you have scaled up to manufacture these vaccines in advance um, is a, a something that this president has done because he's a businessman and thinks through um, exactly uh, how to get a safe and effective vaccine delivered at record speed, and part of that has entailed manufacturing in advance. Um, and to do this, it normally takes years to scale up to commercial level production, but this president has done it in just a few short months. And um, if we have this vaccine by the end of the year, it will be the fastest pace for a vaccine for a novel pathogen in history. Yes. Thank you, Kaylee. I wanted to go back to mail-in voting for just a bit. Right now, five states conduct elections entirely by mail-in prior to the pandemic with no cases or no major cases of fraud, does that success not give the president's confidence in mail-in voting? So those states have um, had time and a history of doing a, a, a having a workable system, um, and one that has been done for many years, for many election cycles, to move the entire country to mass mail-in voting all at once and have an entirely uh, new system and, and do that in just a few short months is an untenable and an unworkable proposition, um, and one that has shown uh, to not work well at all, especially when you look at the disenfranchisement, which I think is, is really really uh, troubling when it comes to mass mail and voting. Um, in 2016, you had 1% of ballots thrown out, absentee ballots, that amounted to 319,000 votes thrown out. And if you have the entirety of the country voting by mail, uh, you can imagine that number would be many folds higher than that. And you look just in the primary, where you've seen states try to move to this mass mail in system. Uh, there were 100,000 ballots rejected in California and New York city. Um, one in five mail-in ballots were rejected. Um, and as a former DOJ voting rights official said, um, it's nuts. That is just way too high when one in five voters, because of mass mail-in voting, um, have their ballots thrown out. Yes. Chanel. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, yesterday, the Senate released an 87-page report on Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's dealings across the board with Ukraine and with Russia. Um, specifically, it showed Hunter Biden supporting Russian prostitution, human trafficking, and receiving $3.5 million from Moscow. The question to you is, does the White House have any intention of helping the DOJ should an investigation be opened up on the Bidens? And number two, do you have a response to Rudy Giuliani yesterday telling us that um, this should immediately disqualify Joe Biden from yeah, those were, that was a very troubling report. You know, I'll leave it to the DOJ as to how they move forward. Um, but I mean, I think this New York Post cover uh, says it all. You know, I heard so much about Russia collusion, uh, but it appears the only uh, collusion going on was between Hunter Biden as he accepted $3.5 million uh, from the wife um, of the Moscow mayor. Very troubling indeed. And in addition to that, Ukraine money as well. Um, and it's good that the Senate looked into that. 
Um, but finally, I would like to know the situation in Louisville, Kentucky last night. There were reports of vandalism. Uh, there were nearly 100 arrests, and the Trump administration urges calm and reminds those who wish to have their voices heard uh, to do so peacefully. You have a right to peaceful protest, as outlined in the First Amendment. Um, and the Attorney General Daniel Cameron said, if we simply act on emotion or outrage, there is no justice. Mob justice is not justice. Justice sought by violence is not justice. It just becomes revenge. And you contrast his message with that of CNN's Brianna Keeler, who said, I question the judgment of the Kentucky Attorney General saying that mob justice is not justice. We know that this is very loaded language. That's an appalling statement um, from Brianna Keeler at CNN. And what is outrageous about this take is that mob justice is not justice. Hours later, after this comment was made on CNN, two police officers were shot. This is not justice. This has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with the value of human life and the safety and security of our American cities. And across the country, uh, we've seen our police officers come under fire in the line of duty in Los Angeles. There was an ambush attempt on two police officers in Phoenix. A U.S. Marshal was ambushed and shot outside a federal courthouse in Linwood, California. A suspect ap approached a patrol car and fired a handgun into the passenger side window. And in Suffolk, Virginia, a a suspect open fired on a marked police car hitting the vehicle three times. Uh, our police officers deserve our respect and the violence that is being committed towards them, and this was just in the last week and a half, uh, is outrageous. And the words of, of CNN and of Brianna Keeler are outrageous, irresponsible, uh, and we should never hear statements like that, followed by hours later, two police officers being shot. Hey, what is it?